All right, so here I'm back at the house that's been my year and a half, almost two year long remodel. We got the inside done. We're gonna be working in the backyard, a whole new pool. We'll be working on the pool house, bathroom. So we're meeting with the designers, the homeowners, the pool guys, so everybody's here. Even Tom the Trimmer's working inside. This is the house where the woodpecker's been chewing up some of the siding and the trim. Let's see, now they've been doing a little bit more damage up here. Here's the evidence, the little circles. Little sucker, he's been, he's been making more holes. So I gotta figure out how to get rid of him before I start fixing up the house. So this is what's all been tore out. There was a pool here at one point and everything's been removed. They've got it kind of laid out where they're going to lay the, install the pool. But my job is not the pool guy, but I'm gonna be working on that part of the house where it's gonna be a bar, there's bathrooms, there'll be a TV, so we're redoing all that. And so we're meeting with the interior designer, the landscaping guys, pool guys, homeowners. So everybody's here and I gotta get inside and get caught up. So while we're on our way there, let me show you, this is a temporary air conditioning. We don't have the unit set because it blocks the path. And because what Tom's been doing in here is all the woods, mahogany, it's very high end. So what we did to vent this thing, instead of taking out a window, is this is taking all the air and we're going up through the attic and then out the side of the house. So that's our temporary AC for this floor. Oh, here, here they all are. Oh, wow. Hey, wow, that looks nice. This is cool. Hey, Lise. Yeah. Here's Lisa, our interior designer. This is cool, what you guys I know, it'll look great. came up with. It looks I awesome. Look, you see, you've seen the doors. The doors are amazing. Yeah, I know, the door, all the mahogany. I want to do some cool stuff like this in my house, Lisa. What, like, oh, just like a, I, I mean, know, this whatever. stuff is really cool. Yeah. yeah. I know. I don't know, so. It's, it just comes in sheets. It's easy to put up. Huh. I mean, this was a challenge. Because yeah, because of the angle. angle, right. But I mean, if you just do it straight, it's simple. And our, maybe the powder bath, walls, yeah, things like, like that. Floor to ceiling. I think it comes in two by 10 sheets. This came pre-finished mm -hmm. too, pre didn't it? pre-finished. There's a multiple different colors available. Yeah, what is that product called? Do you know? It's called um, Wood Up. Huh. Wood up. Wood yeah, wood up, up, man. Wood up. <laughs> like hold the dough. Yeah, exactly. Wood up, hold the dough. So we got it here, and then they also put it up here where the screen's going to go. This is the movie theater room we're in, and so that's the little attention to detail that Lisa's been excellent at coming up with this cool stuff. Now, what's going in this little recessed area? It's a bookcase. It's oh, oh. slanted book. Well, it, oh, it angles. An angled cake bookcase. But the angle, which is nice, is that it also has to do a sound reflection. Right. Doesn't it? It's a lot to do with sound. Well, I mean, this is the, this is the music room. No, this is the this theater, theater room. room. This is right, theater right. room, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Theater it's room. a movie theater up here, which yeah. they want all the different angles. Downstairs is really a true big square room, but they're doing acoustics on the ceiling, which they call skyline, because it right. looks like you're looking down on top of New York exactly. City. We put that up. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. And here we have every every four Ooh. feet, we have lights, big, long lights that glow out to the side. Where do you find long. this stuff? You know, you gotta look around. Keep looking? Keep looking. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> kind of back when you were dating, you just go, well, not good, we're gonna keep looking. Just keep going. Yeah, next, next. <laughs> this is the, the color for the walls. We're fabric wrap paneling every wall in this space. So the fabric is there for again. another, because behind that is like a foam we're putting yes, on there. it's like a homosote wrapped fabric panel. Okay. That's the music room, and the theater room is dark. Downstairs. downstairs. Oh, wait, wait, this is the theater room. This is the theater room. Oh, this, this is, is downstairs. This is, Right, this is this room up here. Okay, so all same color family, but just going darker because this room needs to be dark right. because it's a movie theater it's a movie room. theater, so this room gets really dark. Downstairs is a little lighter. I love that color. It's yeah. like a, Isn't that great? So yeah. these are nice because they have a little iridescence to them, so it's not a flat finish. It's It's got a little bit of Is iridescence shine. a nice word for shiny? <laughs> Yes, it's, okay. it's the I, yeah. on trend word yeah. for, for shiny. Yeah, I didn't get the box, like the box of 64 colors. I got just a... Oh, eight. I got, I got yeah. the big box. Oh, just, so you know all those fancy words. I just know red, green, blue, yellow. That's what Lisa's excellent at, is picking paint colors. Like if the flares exterior of the house turned yeah, out awesome. Yeah, it doesn't look amazing. It really yeah, that's so hard because they had all those little colors on there, and there's just a little shade, shade makes a big difference. You know, people don't realize there's a zillion white shades, and you don't know that until you get them next to each other. And, and, and with the stone in the daylight because in the shade it looks different so. right in the shade looks yeah. different
yeah. different. The sunlight is a right. different side of your house looks uh, different. Yeah. yeah. So what are we today? I thought we we're doing the pool stuff. We too. are, but the fabric rep panel gentleman is here. Oh, so and when so he shows up, we'll, we'll listen. We've been waiting for him. Yeah, we want to talk to him about it because okay. the trim carpenter has a lot of like, questions. Yeah, but he's colored blind, so don't let him pick <laughs> no, any of these colors. He has nothing to do with this. Yeah. He's purely getting the panels up on the wall. Yeah. So when he starts talking <laughs> color, just say, Tom, <laughs> cut, cut him off. He's outside of his wheelhouse. Yes, he is. He's done that many a times. And don't let him text you. Tom, I'm kidding. We love you, Tom. We love you, Tom. See, the edge, this edge. Yeah, that edge is what Tom, he had to add that. There was no detail. All the ends are open. Oh, that's why. So he added that black edge so that that had something for it to die into. So we'll have to get William in here to paint that, probably black. That's a light tray that goes around the room. See the little wire sticking out? So that'll be an indirect light tray that illuminates the ceiling. This is something that's pre-finished. When the painters come in, they'll have to cover all that up, protect it, and it's just an accent detail, but there's a lot of that going on, and that's where Lisa, our interior designer, works her magic. This thing is gonna be beautiful, because these homeowners have great taste, and they're willing to step outside the comfort zone and be willing to try new things, because they want it to be one of a kind, and that's what this room's going to be. So here's a little, some of the details that Tom has been working on that nobody will fully appreciate until it's all done. This wall, as you can come down here, see this little build out, this little trim board? Here's the base. So when this is all done, it will look like the wall starts right here. And it will, but there's a guy that's gonna be putting fabric on. That's what this is going to be, a nailing flange for the fabric that goes on the wall. Behind that is all foam to cre reduce the sound. So this will be filled with foam and the fabric will go on. And when the fabric's on with a little trim piece, this looks like the outside of the wall, which makes this room even more sound deadening. It's gonna be fantastic. And again, it's a reminder, this is a world-class movie theater room. There is probably one of the top movie theater rooms in the country, and we're trying to go for it in the world. Downstairs is a music room. So we have a, the ultimate music room and the ultimate theater room all in one house. This here is where the huge screen is going to go. It's a projector. It's very high end, probably the best you could buy. As you can see, this wall comes out and then angles. This degree has been set specifically. They match both sides. It's all about reflecting and noise and sound. They Not noise, but they want it, the sound coming off the speakers needs to bounce around and not just come straight at you. Behind this entire cavity is going to be filled with nothing but foam. The density has been calculated such to create this angle which is way out of my pay grade. We were just told what we need to do and we've been building it. So I'm along for the ride like you guys. I'm excited to see this once it's all done because it's gonna be unbelievable. Not only are we focusing in on sound reflecting, but you wanna keep the noise out. And one factor where the noise comes from is through the ductwork. We have focused on just doing very linear air vents. This is very high end and the furnace and the AC units, when air blows out of it, it's just short of a whisper. You cannot hear when the AC or the heat is turned on. Another thing we have to do in these rooms because the equipment generates so much heat year round, the difficult thing, I may have said this before, is how do we keep this room cool in the winter time? It's difficult getting AC units to work in the winter. We have figured that out. So it's a high end HVAC equipment so in the winter time, if it's 20 degrees below zero outside, this room could heat up to 85 and we have to cool it down and we've got that figured out. So this is an addition that we put on the house, just a theater room, music room below. The main house has an elevator, but they decided to put a second elevator in. And this one has this beautiful mahogany door that matches all this part of the ultimate man cave, I guess, theater music. Very large elevator. This is bigger than the one in the main house. And this is the raw wood that eventually will be stained and catch up to look like the rest of the doors and in, in inside the house. It's absolutely beautiful. Look how thick these doors are. This is the real deal. I believe these doors were around $1,200 a piece. I should check that. It might even be double that. Hello, Doug. Do you mind if we film some of this stuff as we're talking? No, no. About the room? We're okay. We're talking about wall <coughs> resonances right now. Say that again? Well, well, the, we're talking about wall resonances. In so, other words, yeah. the walls, when sound hits them, talk. This one has a very, very quiet voice. Okay. Okay. But this wall, which is constructed differently because there's concrete behind it, 
That it's actually, a louder voice. It's a louder voice, yeah. which you would think it would be something that would be more dense, but it's the, opposite. Well, it's, because it's on two by fours. Okay. So it's, it's a, just a piece of plywood in space, and it's like a drum. So what we're talking about is how do we stop it from drumming, right? Okay, yes. And so we've got a couple options. We can either put some of that plasterboard on that we used, if you still have some in the warehouse. Uh-huh. Or we could put some two by fours and green glue it, which is a anti resonance glue, because he's going to have to have standoffs for the acoustic panels that are going to be. Yeah, so there's a dis there's a distance that already that's factored in that, that's going in yeah. the standoff. This is a, like a four to six, six inch? inches. I think it's a six inch distance. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a panel over here. So how much room are those? Is that I would call it the foam that's going inside here that uh, sound. The acoustic material detail. is about two inches, two and a quarter inches Jim thick. Jim took off. Yeah. So we have room to add. So we have to room to do something. Up. What is, I can't remember if that's a frame wall. What if we cut holes and we spray foamed insulation in there? That's a good question. Would, it, would that work? That could, that could work. Yeah. I have to look We're, and see what why. That's we're talking about doing with a fireplace. Yeah. So we have some, Just fill that full of. issues here. You know, these are all. The, those noises will never happen. You won't hear that noise. What you'll hear is inside the music, all of a sudden, the horns will be a little blarier. Uh, the violins will be a little screechier. And you'll say, what is that coming from? You realize that it's just the noise these resonant materials make in the room adding to your music. Interesting. So we've got to find a way to, like, see this hollow cavity here, right? As right. you're saying, we could spray foam that, that right. sound detons, and then maybe right. even, since this is a fireplace that doesn't generate any heat, no, it's it actually a, right. it's, there's water, it's an aqua fireplace, right? Yeah. Which is interesting, that what we're doing. So, yeah, I'm um, to see well, it. by the way, guys, this is Doug. He's the homeowner Hi. and a genius when it comes to music and sound. I've, I've been, he's been dragging me along this whole time trying to bring me up to speed. All, I just got to make sure we're doing exactly what you want so that we get like just this here. This is something that oh, yeah. nobody so would pay far, attention to. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. We're looking at all the details very well. And I think by the time we have this all closed up, we're going to have a really good room. Yeah, it's going to be a world-class one. It's going to be yeah, cool. Yeah, it is. So back to this on how we solve that. I, I could have Mark, you write, it does hollow. You can't overdo it, can you? Or, or can you? So let's ask that question. So if I was to fill this full of that oh, open no, cell foam. I don't think that you that could fills overdo it. it. In okay. other words, if you glued that stuff against the concrete and it was absolutely as dead as the concrete, obviously it becomes a non-issue. Then we have to deal with other things, uh, bass response. Th this, the good thing about this stuff is when bass hits it, some of that bass will be absorbed. In a big room like this, we can generate a lot of bass. We have a 37 foot dimension, which will give 37 us- 37 is the length yeah. of this room. So the resonance of this dimension of this room is like 15 Hertz or is it seven hertz? It's really low. Okay. And, and that's like below what humans perceive as sound. It's more what we feel as Oh, you creation. feel it, but before you hear it. Yeah. It's like yeah, the subwoofer, exactly. the yeah, boom, yeah. okay. And if it resonates too much at that frequency, it can be a problem. So it's good to have some things that will absorb some of that. And these walls will do that if they're if they're dense enough, if right? If they're dense enough so they don't talk back when they're doing it. Okay, yeah, that's a great, yeah, talking back. So when you do this, you can hear, a, I don't know if the right word, like an echo, but it does feedback. Uh, yeah, I wonder if, if that, we can get that or off. Put, or take it put, off and put a piece of uh, granite behind Oh, you. there's our granite, it's already yeah. on. There we go. You do, there's a the granite. Yeah. There's the metal. Exactly. Okay. You got it. Yeah, and then, I just I'll have to find out if if we can put granite on the back of it. I'm just not sure well, if there's room. Well, see the sound. Hear this tin, yeah. and then you hit what it we're here. What we're trying to do is just large objects that don't talk sound-wise. Right. Like this wall has has a uh, has an echo, like a little hole. Mm -hmm. Is there a piece of equipment that measures that, or is it just no, your ear? It's, just, be the ear. it's you. You, it's you like got the fine tune. Yeah, they have all these measurements they do all these calculations they do and in the end somebody comes in there and puts an orchestra and an audience in the hall and listens to it and said ah now i think we need this mm. 
And that's the same way with this. Same with, okay, okay. interesting. So, so it would be nice to be able to use something that's flexible. Like if you need more, we can add more. If you need something taken out, we take it out. Like these plaster panels, yeah. they kind of come and go as we yeah. need them. We'll, we'll be able to put, the, the main panel we're going to put in is called a bad pin, which is, I don't know what that stands for, but it's um, an acoustic diffraction panel. It's a piece of masonite, a bunch of holes in it. Behind the masonite is some absorbing material, usually fiberglass. Mm -hmm. So that panel absorbs sound and, and bounces sound off at the same time. It makes the wall so the ear doesn't hear the wall. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. We can put a, a, what they call a polycylinder on the wall. In other words, a piece of masonite that is curved. curved. The, the and that will just explode all, everything that hits it into all different directions. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. We can put absorbing material to just absorb the high frequencies in that wall if the room is too lively. Would we do that? Maybe could you do the curved wall here, do the flat there, mix them up, or would you do it all the same if you've got one you solution? start out with a lot of bad panels because they're so versatile. Mm -hmm. They do like everything. They absorb, they diffract, they reduce base. Oh, I guess it would be one step at a time. Yeah. yeah, one step at a time. This is interesting. So. You really obviously know your stuff, and Doug researches this, and this has been your life passion and dream. This, my, my and passion. We started on this project because of this, and so we got the we house did. done way ahead of this room, but we're almost there. Yeah. But there's a ton of detail in both rooms, and it's going to be fantastic. So they want us upstairs to talk about your pool now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, so this is the cabana part of the pool and we're having a meeting with the homeowners and I'm gonna be meeting with Lisa and the homeowners and their, uh, their staff to kind of figure out what they wanted. Before this was built, it was all ADA, real low bar. This homeowner was uh, in a wheelchair. So we're looking at maybe reconfiguring. We're not sure if we're gonna put a bar out here, if it's a sitting area. So those are up for discussion. You can see where there was a television behind that. Remember this home's about 15 years old. So those TVs were like that deep. Now they're the size of a, of a book. So we're gonna reconfigure, repaint, maybe add some wood accents, make this feel like the new house. So we've got a clean slate. We got great clients that have an open mind. So now we're just trying to have an open discussion on how we're going to finish this space. And inside this room here is a dressing area and a pool bath. Pretty utilitarian concrete floors. You can still see the foundation. It's nice, but we're gonna make it better so it looks like it's been updated with the house. So that's the last step on this big project. All right, so our meeting just wrapped up and um, some people are a little more camera shy than others. But Mark over here is meeting with Doug. We now have got to coordinate with the landscaping guy, and there's also going to be in this cabana some bar area. But we, it's a coordination effort on both parts because we have to work on the house, remove stucco, and then which who comes first. Lisa's over there working with the homeowner. They're adding some more details. We're going to put some beautiful wood ceilings on these areas. We're putting wood on that ceiling. So when it's all done, it's going to reflect the inside of the house. We'll actually come outside as well. It's going to be beautiful. We'll take you guys along for the whole ride. And and I'm excited to see this pool start going in. So we've hopefully we'll have this done here in the next uh, two to three months. So where I'm standing is where the original swimming pool was. And the new concept, the new plan is to take this hill and what they want is to add more trees and they don't have a lot of yards. So we're gonna take this hill where these stakes are here and over there and all this height will come out and then there'll be plantings and garden areas, trees, and then the swimming pool will start in here, bringing it much closer to the house. So you'll see it from the office, you'll see it from the kitchen living area, and you'll be able to see it right there from the cabana. So this will be all outdoor tiled patio, swimming pool, and the more trees that they add, behind those trees are neighbors. You can't see them now, and we're gonna make sure we don't see them again, especially in the winter time. So that is the big master plan, connecting the house to the pool, so it just feels like you're in a resort. It's gonna be fantastic. So this house has multiple AC units. This one goes on here for the music room downstairs, but you can see this is the only access we have to the backyard. We have to bring bobcats, we have to dig the pool yet, and if we put an AC unit there, it's clearly in the way. So we're hoping that what we're gonna do is add one in this area so it'll keep the music room and the theater room cool. That's why we have one upstairs, but if we put one in this location, it will be out of the way but it's really important that we keep 
the humidity and keep the inside of this house at a controlled environment because of the expensive woods that we have. If it gets hot and humidity gets in there, stuff will start to twist and that can cost us thousands of dollars. So these are the little things that impact a remodel. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of people and everybody's got to be on the same page. It's my job to communicate that so that when the AC unit comes in, the sprinkler guys or the landscapers don't freak out and complain because the house is just as important as the outside. Just these little tiny boards do something. Even though they're sound dampening boards, they chose to go with those just for more decorative You're right. to break up the panel so that we've got columns every uh, I see. Feet. Because in between here is the fabric, right? So we've been waiting on these. Do these have to be cut or are they already? This is mahogany, but see how it's all fluted? But you're calling it what, Tom? Flutter free? The official name is flutter free. Flutter free. Kind of like monkey butt powder. Okay, so we're a little shorter at the top, taller at the bottom to give it some height. That's, that's really beautiful. And then in between here is the panels. Also, you see this. This see groove? The groove here. They're made so that you can put numerous can boards put side by side to get a more sound. Oh, so you put, what do you call those things? So you, you put a spline in here. A spline. And then you just keep stacking them on each other and just fasten them to the wall. Oh, just keep going all the way down. So that's beautiful. This is what's been holding up the job quite a bit because this was a special custom order. Tom, when you get these done, then you're pretty much done here, aren't you? Yeah, I've got to run some baseboard. I have to build the frame, so one by two frames to go around inside that they can wrap their fabric around. All this is here, because so, when they stab, <coughs> staple, or whatever, however they do, attach the, the, the clips, it just looks like it's just slid against the wall. It, right. It's kind of like magic, like how is that staying in place? The new thing is, I didn't realize, do you remember what's behind that wall? Because Doug is saying, when you hit on the wall, how it kind of has a little echo to it. Right. They, well, they chose, there, there's some insulation right there. Because when you pound on that, it's got a hollow sound. Yes. As opposed to that wall. That wall and that wall. It's uh -huh. got drywall behind. Okay. Did he tell you he's thinking he wants drywall? Right, so I'm going to bring some of that drywall back that we hauled out of here. They may not want the whole wall filled with that. They might just cut a chunk, put one here, a piece there kind of randomly put them on. Does that, I don't know, this, this is a whole different animal trying to figure this all out. But I wanted to come in and cut holes and spray foam well, the back of that thing. Too. And I think that would help just fill that whole cavity and sit, instead of having a void behind there, it's now full of spray foam. But I can't remember, now, I'm trying to find my picture. The is there insulation? The there has you to can, be. You can spray that, but if that foam doesn't adhere to the plywood, to dampen the sound, the plywood still may sound hollow. Yes. If it doesn't, I think butt there, up to there the had there. I know there's there has to be insulation. We would insulate that wall. Yes, it is insulated. It's just that it's bats. Those walls are thicker, so they sound more sound. Yeah, exactly. Bad. Okay. Yeah, All so right. There's in there. Right. So spray foaming will not work. All right. As you guys can see, this is a very complicated project. Doesn't look like much because that's the addition right there. We already did the house. Tom is extremely busy working on all those fine details. He is definitely the guy for the job. I really appreciate his attention to detail and the time he takes. He really thinks things all the way through. And believe it or not, I haven't had a long text from him in a while, so I guess I'm due. So thank you guys for watching. I'm Brad the Builder. I'll see you guys at the next job site. Okay, I just got off the phone with uh, Kyle, who's doing all the remodel work for us down in Houston, Texas, where Colin Doyle is. He is currently still in the hospital. He's on week six of an eight week stay. So we have a huge push to getting his home done. We're just down to a few things. We're waiting on some master, the shower tile coming in for the flooring. And Colin is getting a little taste of what it's like to build a house or do some remodeling because things don't always go as planned. Kyle's doing a tremendous job staying ahead of the schedule. I hope to be down there when Colin gets out of the hospital to review this bathroom that you guys have all helped support. By the way, we're still about $3,500 short of our goal. So if you could click the link below, I would greatly appreciate it. Colin is tickled to death and is cannot wait to get home to see what you guys have done for him. So thank you so much and I appreciate it.